So people, today I'm going to cook for you a lazy man's cacciatore. Uh, just simple little dish comprising of a few murdered chickens. Well, you see, here we've got the evidence for the crime. We had four chicken breasts there, so this comprises, this is the result of the deaths of at least two chicken, if not three or four, because, you know, I don't know whether two of those breasts came from the same chicken, you know what I mean? So, it is quite possible that they came from four separate chickens, and they all had to face their demise in order so that we can have a lovely dish here. But, you know, such is life eat or being eaten and I prefer to eat so we start by heating up some oil and put in a little bit of sambal ulek there now this is obviously not Italian but you know you could in put in some chopped chilies or something like that same thing same difference um, and we start by coloring the whole lot with a little bit of tomato puree that will give it a lovely golden sheen as we're frying the chicken. And um, it also imparts some flavor to the whole thing. So I'm just waiting for the whole thing to come to, to um, temperature now. And the first thing I'm going to put in is actually some onion. Because I want the onion to become a little bit more cooked. Other things that will go in, so we have onion, garlic and some herbs from the garden so what have we got? We've got curly parsley we've got some flat parsley, we've got some oregano and we've got a little bit of sage so it's, uh, it's a lovely time of the year for all that stuff now so the onions are going to go in I'm going to start browning them, no well, not browning them, just cooking them till they go a little bit translucent that's good enough. Turn it to heat a little bit so it will actually start frying here. And don't you worry, uh, one of the things I'll be doing is editing this video, so cutting bits out, like for example at um, just after this little speech here because uh, you know you're not going to be interested in seeing me stir this around for five minutes so the onions have gone slightly glassy slightly translucent and as you can see the tomato puree has colored the whole thing quite a lot so now is a good time to be putting in the chicken so here come the wee little corpses again or parts thereof and they're going to go into the pan now. So there you go. I'll just give that a few minutes so that all the chicken is cooked through and it's starting to brown a little bit. Butchering chickens is a it's a very interesting process actually. It's all industrialized these days. And it's um it's very quick really for the little things. Uh, you you hang them upside down into this conveyor belt thing as they get transported off because they're upside down they get kind of docile and a little bit floppy you know they don't realize what's going to happen obviously and then they reach this little watery thing where they their heads go in and they get jolted with an electric stock shock that stuns them and then the little heads get ripped off and they get plucked and of course by that time they feel nothing at all and um, then onwards for processing and that's how you get these lovely little chicken breasts and stuff like that so I just you know wanted you to know that because I'm sure it will be appetizing to know where your food came from the garlic shouldn't go in straight away you know you leave that until a little bit later because you don't want garlic to burn there's nothing more horrible than burnt garlic in a dish so put the garlic in when your chicken is almost ready almost cooked through and then when you feel 
it's ready. And don't worry if the chicken isn't 100% cooked through because you're going to put in a sauce and it's going to sit there simmering away in that sauce for a good while longer. By the time all that is done, it will be cooked through. So then you take some chopped tomatoes. And there you go. And what I tend to do is take a little bit of water and just swirl it around in the tin and add it to it. But at this stage, we've got the sauce in. The chicken is cooked, the onion is cooked, the garlic is cooked. And then basically all you need to do add after that, turn it up. Make sure it comes to the boil as quickly as possible. It gives it better flavor to the tomatoes. Put in a bit of salt to taste. You can always add it. You don't put in too much straight away because you can always add a little bit more later if it's not salty enough. If you put in too much and it is salty, there's nothing you can do about it. So then just rip your herbs and start putting them in. So flat parsley. Obviously I washed them all after I cruelly ripped them off the other parts of the plant. I gave them a little rinse under the tap. I washed them but they're coming out of my own garden so hey, you know I didn't put any insecticides or any nonsense like that on them or herbicides or whatever else so they're pretty organic in that sense so the sage and plenty of oregano because I just simply cannot have enough of that it only gives a lovely flavor Now, by now it's come to the boil quite nicely. And now we just leave that to simmer for whatever, about half an hour maybe. And there you go, a lazy man's chicken cacciatore, very simple to make. <clears throat> this will take less time to make than it would take you to get into your car and drive to your closest takeaway. It'll taste nicer, it'll be healthier, and all you need to do is cook some pasta, for example, to go with this, or potatoes even if you prefer that, rice, whatever you like. I prefer pasta. You could even have bread and just dip your bread into this while you're eating it. And maybe some vegetables or a salad or something like that to go with this. And you've got a lovely meal. Bon appetito.